So by this point, there was a ton of people waiting for this bus, and as it slowly crept up to us and opened its doors, everybody just rushed it, and it looked like Walmart during Black Friday. There was yelling, pushing, screaming in agony because a couple of people were getting jammed up against the frame of the door, all to get on this bus to be taken to a train station to get back to the heart of Lisbon. So the question is, was it worth it? Was this little trip to Sintra, Portugal worth it? As someone that makes videos for YouTube, I, like many others, have been inspired by a photographer, videographer named Peter McKinnon. Now, I've been watching his work for years, but there was one video in particular that really impacted me, and that was because of the driving force behind the story of this video, which was to take a photo. Taking a photo was such a strong motivator for him to go out on this pretty pretty epic big adventure i would say and even though the results were not guaranteed which were to get this pristine epic bucket shot photo he still did it and i found that concept extremely fascinating as much as i enjoyed taking photos i never thought of it as a spark to an adventure like the bucket shot was for peter mckinnon that is until i found myself in sintra portugal I've documented my Airbnb experience tour in greater detail in a previous video, but for this one, I wanted to touch on a subject that I didn't get to in that one, which is something that affects every curated tour ever created, which is the amount of time the group is able to spend in one location. My traveling style is that of being able to spend hours and hours at a single location if I'm enjoying its vibes. I really enjoy not being told when it's time to go when I don't want to go. But when it comes to partaking in that traditional tour structure, the one I went on was top notch. It was great, except for when that time frame issue crept up at a place called Cabo da Roca. And at this place, there was a killer lighthouse. And while I was there, I just felt like there was more to this place. Another layer, multiple layers that in order to find them, you needed more time to explore. And these are layers that tour guides probably aren't going to tell you because what's the point? There's not enough time for you to fully enjoy the nuances, these little things of this environment that could potentially add up to make a great, great photo. Ultimately, we visited that location for 30 minutes and that was it. After that, we were gone and on to the next stop. But by that point, the seed of an idea was planted and was taking root. And much like Peter McKinnon's bucket shot, propelled by photography, which was a first for me, I didn't know if this idea was gonna pan out the way I had envisioned it. So I sat on the idea for a few days. The situation was as follows. I was back in the heart of Lisbon, which is absolutely amazing. And I had so many more areas within walking distance of my Airbnb that I needed to explore. So the question I kept asking myself was, do I wanna use an entire day to go back to Cabo de Roca, a place that I already visited for the purpose of taking a photo, a photo in which its composition was visualized with a perspective that I didn't even get to experience while I was there, nor did I even think that it was possible to place myself in the right area for that perspective, for that composition. So in my mind, the whole idea felt like a very, very rough sketch and I didn't think was gonna materialize the way I hoped it would. So I sat down at my favorite craft beer spot in Lisbon and I turned the idea over a couple of times and eventually, eventually after a few pints, settled on, fuck it, let's do it. 
For this mission, I wasn't gonna have a guide or driver telling me when it was time to go. So the first step was to figure out the logistics. And after a little bit of research, I found a direct train route from the heart of Lisbon to Sintra. And once I would get to that station, jump on a bus in which its final destination was Cabo da Roca. So sounded simple enough. So there I went. Once I arrived to the Sintra station, I made my way to the bus station and I was presented with a humongous group of people. It felt like every traveler in Lisbon was like, yeah, let's go to this place all at the same time. And needless to say, it was a fully packed bus. And after a while, you could just smell everybody's body odor just intermingling and hotboxing the whole bus and add a little bit of uh, motion sickness with all the crazy twists and turns along the hills to get to Cabo da Roca and it wasn't a very enjoyable ride to say the least it's almost comical to how bad that little journey was but eventually I made it maybe not in the happiest of terms but I got there and after a little bit breathing the fresh air being greeted by the scenery the wonderful weather I got myself back into the game and so I was off to find this location that I have envisioned. And so after hanging out in the tourist area for about 30 minutes, I looked up the road and I saw the faint outline of a trailhead that seemed to lead into the hills. So I make my way there and before long I'm weaving my way down the coastline and the lighthouse behind me is getting smaller and smaller. And by this point, everywhere you look is picture worthy, but it just didn't feel like it was it. So I kept going farther and farther. And before long, I was about to call it quits. By this point, I've taken so many photos that one of them had to be it, right? There was just so many beautiful photos. And so when I thought that, I then saw that the trail climbed and veered off to the left a little bit up ahead. So I decided to make that my final stop. And so there I go. And as soon as I make the climb and the turn, that was it. That was the location that I had envisioned. Everything just seemed to materialize that instant. It was beautiful. At first, I was stunned at the scenery before me. But before long, I got my bearings, I threw off my pack, took out my camera, locked in the settings, and positioned my subject properly, and took the shot. What started off as a rough draft of an idea resulted in not only my favorite photo of this campaign in Europe, but a fascinating experience in chasing after that one photo. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, but what adventure is? At the end of the day, you gotta take the good with the bad and decide whether it was worth it. And for me, for this little adventure, it was, especially because it got me thinking in a new way, a way that I usually apply to only travel, which is what's next? How can I make my next travel adventure that much bigger? Where am I going? How many countries? But now, infusing photography and what I learned with this little experience, it's gonna ultimately lead to killer photos, bigger adventures, and just overall stories to share with you guys. And so, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of The Shot. Episode two is in the works, being drafted as we speak. How is that going to turn out? Is it going to succeed? Is it going to fail? Stay tuned and always remember, work hard, invest in yourself, and travel the world. Peace.